In this episode, we will study the physics of the movie Interstellar. Let's enjoy it! Interstellar was a very successful film delivered in 2014. It was famous because of the way how they used some of the results of general relativity for explaining part of the story. Here we are planning to explain to you what the director of the movie was trying to suggest by exploring some scenes in this interesting movie. The first effect which we have to consider is the effect of artificial gravity. If we pay attention to this scene where Cooper and friends arrive to the space station, which is designed to generate artificial gravity, the effect of gravity is generated when the station starts to rotate. Artificial gravity is the main reason why people seem to have a normal life at the end of the movie in the so-called Cooper's station. In some of the final scenes, when Cooper wakes up after spending several years in the space, he found himself not on the Earth, but rather on a giant space station which looks like our planet but with a much larger curvature. The station regulates the entrance of light coming from the sun, providing light during the daytime. Then the human race in the movie survive, but not on the Earth, but rather floating on the space. This means that our planet was in reality destroyed in the movie. The second important effect explained in Interstellar is the no propagation of sound in the vacuum. When we watch movies where space explosions occur, like Star Wars for example, usually we perceive this. Where a real explosion in the space is not like that. The sound only propagates if there is a medium through which it can travel. This is the case in this scene where the astronauts land at Miller's planet, which contains atmosphere and as a consequence air through which the sun can propagate. Instead, the sun cannot propagate through the vacuum. Interstellar shows correctly a scene where there is an explosion in the space and where the sun doesn't propagate through the vacuum. The third important physical effect shown in the movie Interstellar corresponds to the existence of wormholes. There is a scene where the astronauts cross a wormhole which was created at the solar system. When they are crossing the wormhole, the ship cannot be controlled manually. It rather follows the only path which general relativity allows it to take. But what are the wormholes? Do they really exist? Wormholes appear as part of the solutions of the Einstein equations in general relativity. When we solve the Einstein equations under the spherically symmetric assumption, we then get initially the spatial solution. However, when we change the spatial coordinates toward the cross-cal secret coordinates, we realize that the spatial coordinates only cover half of the whole space-time. The other half of the space-time corresponds to another different region. This region could be interpreted as another universe or as another portion of the same universe. In a space-time diagram expressed in terms of the Kruskal secret coordinates, we can enumerate the different regions. The region 1 corresponds to the region external to the black hole. The region 2 corresponds to the region inside the event horizon of the black hole. The region 3 corresponds to the external region of another portion of the same universe or to another universe and the region 4 is the time reverse version of the region 2. In both regions, the number 2 and the number 4, singularities are developed. If we analyze the dynamic of the spatial space-time expressed in terms of the Kruskal secret coordinates, a wormhole connecting the two external regions 1 and 3 is generated. 
However, the wormhole generated by this special space-time doesn't live so long. In fact, although this wormhole would have a radius equivalent to a gravitational radius, which for the case of a black hole would be big enough to be crossed, it collapses almost immediately after its formation, and no information is able to cross from one side of the wormhole to the other. But then, which modification do we need to make to the space-time such that the wormholes can be sustained in time? In order to cross a wormhole, like the movie Interstellar suggests, we need exotic matter violating the null and the weak energy conditions. This would imply, for example, negative energy densities in certain regions, something which classically doesn't happen. However, even if classically it seems to be impossible to sustain our home at the quantum level, it is still possible to have regions with negative energy densities, which, if stabilized, could help to generate traversable wormholes, just like in the movies. It is evident that our current technology is not yet at the level of generating wormholes, but the fact that Einstein gravity, combined with the quantum field theory, allows the possibility of their existence, it's very exciting. With the quantum effects, then we don't need to invoke exotic matter arguments in order to find sustainable and traversable wormholes. Other types of wormholes that are in principle easier to generate involve the René Nostrum black hole solution. This solution contains charge in addition to the mass for the black hole. The generation of a wormhole inside this scenario requires in addition the inclusion of fermions moving around the corresponding background. This model is called the Einstein-Dirac-Maxwell model and it would only allow to send information through the wormhole, but not crossing it, as it occurs in the movies. In other words, these wormholes are not traversable, even if they are still allowing the flow of information. The four important physical effects are the huge tidal forces that the Miller's planet rotating around a black hole experience. Cooper and friends have the experience of visualizing the amazing effects of those tidal forces when they arrive to this planet which is rotating around the black hole called Gargantua. The planet is just covered by water on its surface. Initially, Cooper and friends visualize what looks like mountains, but subsequently they realize that those are not mountains but rather giant waves generated by the tidal forces which the black hole provokes over the planet. In order to understand the tidal forces, let's imagine the moon and our planet. The gravity of the moon generates tidal forces on our planet. Robokin then changes on the level of the waters around the world. Imagine now that the moon is a black hole and our planet rotates them much faster around this black hole in order to keep a stable orbit. This would certainly generate huge tidal effects and giant waves in our planet, for example. The fifth important physical effect illustrated in the movie is the extreme time dilation effect experienced by Cooper and friends inside the Miller's planet. This planet is under the gravitational influence of the black hole Gargantua. The gravitational field of Gargantua is so intense at the location of Miller's planet that the effect of time dilation is evident. Indeed, in such a case, one hour in Miller's planet corresponds to seven years in our planet. Even a more extreme time dilation effect is suffered by Cooper and his friend when they approach to the black hole living horizon, before trying to escape from its gravitational attraction in one of the last scenes. Near the black hole living horizon, the time almost stops completely in comparison with the time which we perceive in our planet. Even worse, 
Cooper throws himself inside the black hole. This occurs in one of the last scenes. The black hole Gargantua was supposed to be special in the sense that it didn't have a singularity, but it rather had a so-called soft singularity. This explains why Cooper can still survive the tidal force effects, which in ordinary conditions would kill him, making him to become a spaghetti. Due to the accumulating effect of the extreme time dilation suffered in Miller's planet, plus the extreme time dilation suffered near and inside the black hole, by the time Cooper meets again his daughter, he found that she was already a very old woman about to pass away. These, among others, are some of the possible consequences of an interstellar trip. The time dilation effect due to gravity has been proved experimentally. It's one of the biggest achievements of general relativity. Then in different points of the universe, the time flows at different rates, and this applies to the biological processes in the same way. The six important physical effects are evidently the black holes and how they look in reality. In this scene, we can perceive how Gargantua looks. In this scene, Cooper and his friend intend to escape from the gravitational attraction of the black hole before the ship crosses the even horizon. The even horizon can be identified by the luminous halo surrounding the black hole. Compare the black hole of the scene with the first photograph of a black hole taken by the Even Horizon Telescope collaboration team and illustrated here. We can again notice the luminous halo. The luminous halo is in reality light coming from behind the black hole, which although doesn't cross the Even Horizon, it still pass through its neighbor region. The seventh important physical effect illustrated in the movie is the conservation of momentum. There are at least two scenes showing the importance of the momentum conservation in the space. The first one corresponds to the case where the astronauts just take off from the Earth toward the space station. In such a case, unnecessary separation of some parts of the rocket occurred during the trip. Similar separation of parts is done in one of the last scenes when the astronauts are trying to escape from the black hole. First, the robot TARS is separated together with his ship. The main purpose was to earn momentum for the main ship where the astronauts were. Subsequently, since Cooper knew that there was not enough fuel to escape from the black hole, then he decided to sacrifice himself by separating his small ship from the main ship. For each separation, the main ship earns some important amount of momentum in order to escape from the black hole. The momentum conservation principles are standard and well understood, even inside the Newtonian dynamics. For every material leaving the ship behind, the ship moves advance correspondingly in agreement with the momentum conservation laws. The eighth and final relevant physical effect illustrated in the movie are the existence of extra dimensions. In one of the final scenes, Cooper jumps toward the black hole. Interestingly, after crossing the horizon, when he enters the interior region of the black hole, he finds himself inside a structure created by humans which we can interpret as a navigation through a fifth dimension. In fact, Cooper is able to see the whole region of the space-time covering the events inside the room of his daughter. He can see the past, present, and the future. Then he tries to give a message to his daughter by finding her grown-up version in one of the many possible events inside the room. He sends basically quantum data through the wormhole, which was in principle created by humans. In this part of the movie, the director conjectures that the extra dimensions really exist. 
something which is supported inside a string theory, for example. However, in a string theory, the extra dimensions are compact in principle, such that we cannot see them in our daily life. Then for the scene in Interstellar to make sense, the humans in principle found a way to expand one of the extra dimensions, and the humans also found a way to generate a traversable and stable world home. This part of the movie is based on issues which have not yet been proved experimentally, especially the existence of extra dimensions, even if some theories still support their existence. With the quantum data received via Warhol, Cooper's daughter could solve the problem of gravity. Then, in principle, she could reconcile quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of relativity, something which physicists have been struggling with for several years. In fact, there is no accepted theory of quantum gravity until now. Here we illustrate what Cooper saw inside the black hole. This structure is known as a tesseract. In this case, the tesseract is a four-dimensional surface with each edge connected to four different sides, each side corresponding to the three spatial dimensions plus the time coordinate. Somehow, Cooper could see the same spatial coordinates of his daughter's room, represented here as each box in the tesseract, but at different instants or at different intervals of time for each box. For doing this, Cooper should have been able to move over extra dimensions. When he sent the message to his daughter, he generated space-time perturbations over the world lines of his daughter. In other words, he sent his messages, including the quantum data, via gravitational waves. In summary, Interstellar is a great movie trying to illustrate how real physics would operate if our technology someday is good enough for traveling through the universe. Most of the physics illustrated is accurate. For the case of wormholes, although we have not yet observed one, the fact that general relativity predicts their existence is a very important issue considering that general relativity has never failed in any single of its previous predictions. This includes the existence of black holes, gravitational waves, deviations of the light due to gravity, time dilation effects, and the corrections to the rotations of the planets. For the case of extra dimensions, although we have several theories suggesting their existence, there is not yet experimental evidence about it. If you liked this video, please give us a like, share the link, and subscribe to the channel. More videos in Spanish and in English are coming very soon. Continue with us.